The Cooler Master SK630 and SK650 are low profile cherry red keyboards from Cooler Master with a confusing target audience. I can say that confidently, but I absolutely love mine. And uh, yeah, not for the reasons you probably think. So this will be a short review, relatively speaking, of a keyboard that I've spent about a week with. You can grab either of these models, by the way, the 630 or the 650 uh, on sites like Amazon or eBay. We've affiliate linked them down below. Uh, the only difference between them is the 10 key inclusion on the 650 model, uh, which is the one that I've been using personally, the one that I have here in front of me, the 630. So uh, you'll see more of this one just because it's easier to film. It's not as wide. Uh, anyway, they definitely take a bit of getting used to, to, to put it lightly. Uh, perhaps that's an understatement and I'm still not fully adjusted to the low profile keycaps, nor for that matter, the red switches I much prefer browns or the more tactile uh, blues when replying to emails or writing scripts, uh, but when gaming, I think reds are, uh, reds are okay. And look, that's an unfortunate side effect of this model. You'll be stuck with cherry low profile red switches no matter what. So if you plan to use this for productivity alone, uh, you, yeah, you should probably look elsewhere. But let's start with physical attributes before addressing ergonomics. The aluminum deck, I'm gonna call it the deck, I'm not sure what the actual term is for this. Uh, underneath the keys, it's actually a nice touch. It's uh, got chamfered edges, uh, provides added flair. The board connects to your PC via USB-C and a long braided cable is included. Uh, no, there's USB-A on the other side, but USB-C to connect the uh, cable to the keyboard itself. The RGB integration is beautiful. Cooler Master's LED functions are embedded as usual, limiting the need for dedicated software. The effects are varied and wide ranging, so I'm sure you'll find something tasteful. These are just a few here. Uh, now on to the feel. This is where I'm gonna spend the bulk of the review. Typing is difficult at best. Uh, the keycaps are large and slightly concave, uh, but nowhere near as concave as a traditional mechanical keyboard. They are raised quite a bit above the aluminum deck, and I think that's where the issues begin to pile on. So uh, my words per minute, for example, dropped by about 20 to 25%. Uh, with this keyboard compared to a Cherry Red MK750 or just another mechanical Cherry Red keyboard, a traditional mechanical one, or what you would call a gaming keyboard. And uh, yeah, that, that's after a week of trying to get used to this. So I'd say that's probably a problem. Now the optimal keyboard in my sense for my everyday use, which includes scripting, gaming, uh, just content creating, all that stuff, is a brown switch keyboard, mechanical preferably, traditional deck. I really like the feel of those keyboards. It took a bit of getting used to. I was used to just the membrane, the cheap keyboards uh, for the longest time, just because that's all I had available to me in school. Um, but this is like radically different from anything I've ever used before. And I think that's why I'm still struggling to get my words per minute up. Uh, so if you if you plan on typing a lot of stuff, on your computer and you want to use a keyboard like this, it will have a severe learning curve. You can't just pick this thing up and just start typing right away. It looks more like a laptop keyboard, but it's not even close to that. I actually have a higher WPM with my laptop, my Huawei Matebook X Pro, uh, which has just, you know, kind of, uh, it's not a great keyboard, but, uh, yeah, you can see there's like no key travel. There's really not much feedback. The keys are spaced about as far apart as they are on the SK630 and 50, which is kind of funny. Uh, but other than that, the similarities stop. And uh, if I had to pick between my laptop keyboard and this keyboard for productivity, despite the fact that I've used a laptop a lot longer, I would say that I'm actually more keen to typing better on the laptop. Uh, and then the WPM obviously shows that. Uh, so w whatever you think about that aside, um, it's definitely a beautiful board, but it does come with that huge compromise. One of the reasons why I think that's the case is because the keys themselves are very close together. Uh, they are not very concave, meaning that it doesn't really wrap around uh, your finger, each key I'm talking about here. And that could be an issue. Like if you're trying to find the bridge between two keys, the space is so small, sometimes you accidentally hit uh, a key next to the one you're trying to hit. And that could cause an issue when typing. You can see how many errors I had in uh, this test here uh, versus a traditional red switch mechanical keyboard. That's an issue. Now, the second issue is key height. And this comes down really to the switch mechanism use. I think low profile cherry reds are great in other cases, but in my opinion, they should have been avoided here. Uh, there are plenty of low profile keyboards on the market that manage with much more compact switches and many of which will include a small deal of actual 
actuation, right? That feedback that you want from something like blues or, or, or browns even. Uh, you don't get any of that with reds. That's why reds aren't preferable for typists or anything of the sort. Uh, so if you're going for that, if you still want low profile and you want better type ability, if you will, then uh, don't go for this, go for something else. I'll link something down below. Now up to this point, all of my feedback has been from the fingers of a mixed user. Someone who edits videos, types the occasional script, replies to emails, surfs the web, and plays the occasional video game on PC. But what if we're talking about just video games? Would a keyboard like this serve any purpose? I, yeah, this one's a bit harder to test. I don't have a WPM calculator that works for a game like Fortnite per se, but what I can say is that gaming is it's actually doable, arguably equitable with this keyboard as it is to a beefier MX Red counterpart. I know that sounds super silly and look, I'd never expect esports gamers to suddenly buy these up in bulk to replace their long time go-to peripherals. I know Lisa's not the biggest fan of this style keyboard. I think this is more of an aesthetic play than anything else. Uh, that said, I don't think the average gamer would mind the change of pace. I mean, if you just wanna try something new, this definitely feels new. The red key inclusion certainly helps in various titles. The actuation is steady and predictable. A drawback, however, is the angle of the board. This could make things uncomfortable with time. You can't really incline it and you don't really have like a wrist support of any kind included. So yeah, this will depend on the user. It's just something you need to keep in mind if you decide to buy this. Now look, I wanna love these keyboards. I really do. And to an extent, I, I actually do love them. They're definitely different. I like that Cooler Master's kind of, I don't know, treading new waters here. So if you're looking for a change and favor aesthetics over sheer functionality, this could be something you could get used to, but it won't be an easy process. I mean, even if you're coming from a genuine low profile keyboard or laptop even, the SK630 and 50 are beasts of their own. Take my word for it. If you can find one on display somewhere like Best Buy or Micro Center, again, I strongly encourage you to play around with it a bit just before you pull the trigger. So that said, I can't openly recommend these boards for that reason alone. They're just, they're too different. And I think that most people are gonna be a little too impatient to, to, to pick up on the learning curve. My typing speed and accuracy alone are a testament to that. Uh, I have, however, linked the boards again down below uh, for those who are confident in their purchase decisions uh, or for those who may have already had hands-on experience uh, and just want a second, second opinion. Maybe you're just watching this because you want to see if you know i'm experiencing the same things you experienced when you tried this thing out in the store or something oh and one more thing before i go these aren't cheap <laughs> i had no idea going into this that they'd be well over a hundred dollars a piece uh yeah i was frankly stunned by that and strongly urge cooler master to reconsider their target audiences with these i understand that new ventures can be costly but you risk ruling out entirely new entrants on the consumer side by charging nearly two hundred dollars for a keyboard that arguably does its job worse than leading keyboards in the $100 price range. And no, looking super sexy isn't a good enough excuse, although these do look pretty darn sexy. So that's all for me in this one. Like, subscribe, and tune in for the uh, next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for learning with us.